This podcast is sponsored by... Football has its ups and downs. You can't win every match, but you can win every bet. Start your free trial and earn 30 pounds risk-free today at oddswatchdog.co.uk. Hello and welcome to the Guna Ramble. I'm here to introduce you to the first of our summer episodes. This one being Akil interviewing a few journalists. First up we have Sammy Mockbell of the Daily Mail, followed by a discussion with Jeremy Wilson of the Telegraph. Following on the heels of this, we'll have two more episodes uh, in the next week or so. The first being um, Amanda speaking with Waz and a, and a referee about referees, the state of refereeing, etc. And then after that, we will have a, uh, a ladies-only podcast. Amanda will be bringing, uh, bringing on Seema and Sophie Nicolau. So that should be a great one as well. So keep listening, folks. We do appreciate it. Hi, Sammy. Welcome. Thank you. How are you? Yeah, very well. How's your summer been? Been watching the uh, the under twenty ones. I mean, maybe it's a bad day as we're as we're recording this thing and they've just gone out. But in general, been watching it. Yeah, I've been watching. It. I think it's fair. I think Nick and I have gone out to Germany but in, on penalties as um, as traditionally we do. But um, I yeah. think it bodes well. I think there were some good performances from you know from, from from some of the players and you know going out to penalties and against Germany is it, 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 it obviously a difficult way to go out, but. You know, from a, from an Arsenal perspective, you know, Callum Chambers um, played pretty well and sort of enhanced his reputation. And um, you know, T- Tammy Abraham, I think, played quite well. Was was fairly impressive up front. So um, yeah, bodes well for the future. Yeah, I mean, just talking about Callum Chambers. I mean, obviously he was on loan last season. He's he's he was, you know, he, he, it was it was touted to fans as as he needs experience, and I think most people agreed. But I think the unexpected thing was how Rob Holding suddenly came in and just looked so mm-hmm. accomplished, especially at the end of the season. I mean, do you think Arsenal would listen to offers for Callum Chambers, or do you think they would want to keep him, or where, where do you see that going? Um, I think it's a tough one. I think it's a tough one. I think no, I, I think. When all said and done, I think they will listen to offers because Callum Chambers is in a position now where he needs to be playing regular football. Um, he had that last season at Middlesbrough. Um, he was actually quite good at, at Middlesbrough last season, particularly alongside Ben Gibson um, in Hartley's, <coughs> excuse me, in, in, in Hartley's reputation there. Um, so I don't think he's going to want to come back to Arsenal and, and, and play a peripheral role you know, coming off the bench every now and then. Do you think the move um, to the three centre-backs, though, might slightly make him think, actually, there's another position there now, or, or do you think... That yeah, yeah, really potentially, to... potentially. It depends if it depends if, if uh, Arsenal yeah. sign another centre-back this summer, as I think they are looking for one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that, that could certainly change things, and I, and, and I think and I think Arsenal are really very reluctant to let him go. Well, that's my understanding and understanding of the situation anyway. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he still sees a player in Callum Chambers, um, but f- for one reason or another, he's not quite cut the mustard at, uh, at Arsenal. Um, Where the last season's experience of Middlesbrough will, will, will help him, will help him in pre-season when he actually returns to Arsenal this summer remains to be seen. But I, I'd expect, I'd expect Callum Chambers to to, to, to potentially move on. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I mean, we, we, you sort of we touched on last season a little bit there with Rob Holding, mm. but I mean, what 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 are your thoughts on Arsenal season? I mean, obviously, ultimately finishing fifth, first time out of the Champions League in, in mm. over twenty years was a massive disappointment. But then, you know, uh, winning the FA Cup was, I guess, it was a big surprise because if if I remember looking at the odds in the, in the before the semi finals, and actually Arsenal were the fourth, so they were the outsiders. Tottenham were mm. were even slightly bigger um, than, than oh, sorry, smaller odds than Arsenal were. So, mm. you know, Arsenal were big outsiders there. I mean, I, I did put 20 quid on myself, so I, I had a <laughs> great night that night. But, I mean, yeah. how would you how, how would you see Arsenal, see, or how would you say Arsenal season went? It's a bit of a mixed bag, really, after I think, you know, 
your bread and butter. You have to look at it. Obviously, your bread and butter is the Premier League, and yeah, and essentially it was it was a disappointing season. You know, finishing out of the top four is um, is massive for a club like Arsenal because you know they're, they're, they're used to they're used to being among Europe's elite year in year out. You know, yeah. I, I know I know the club takes a lot of stick for not getting past the. You know the, 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 yeah. the last sixteen yeah, stages, yeah. which is which is fair enough, and I think that the sort of that criticism is warranted. But it is a club who's geared up for Champions League football. The Emirates Stadium is a stadium yeah. built for for those massive European nights, and and next season, disappointingly, obviously they you know they're, they're, they're going to be hosting Europa League football, which is a, a massive disappointment for the club. And the FA Cup kind of. I don't want to say paper over, papers over the cracks because winning the FA Cup is, a, is, is still a big deal and yeah. it's, a massive, it's, a, it's a massive accomplishment. But um, in saying that, finishing fifth um, in general, in general terms, I think it kind of means it was, it was a disappointing season for Arsenal last season despite winning the FA Cup. Yeah, I mean, I, I, t- I totally agree. I mean, if... I think before sort of that that um, Everton and Man City game just before Christmas where mm. we lost lost on the road twice. I mean we were on a massive unbeaten run. We were I think second in the league potentially. We'd only lost the one game, so I think to to think we were going to finish fifth then was kind of just beyond belief. So <laughs> yeah, I mean what 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 was your thoughts on that on that FA Cup final? Obviously we all we all absolutely loved it. I mean was there. Was there an element of surprise of, of on how Arsenal plays? I think that with the Man City semi final, yeah, yeah, we we played well, we played all right, but I don't think we completely outplayed Man City like we outplayed Chelsea in the final. I mean, yeah. was there was there an element of surprise, or was it a bit like Chelsea are kind of on the beach, or is that you know I heard the other day someone saying that you know potentially the double isn't you know it, it's not the same as when mm. Arsenal used to win it. I mean, what, what do you think? Why do you think that happened in the final? I, I I do I do think there was <clears throat> excuse me, there was a, there was an element of 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 Chelsea struggling to lift themselves after winning winning the Premier League because they'd won it two or three two or three weeks yeah. prior to the yeah. cup final and I don't care what anyone says you know once you once you've won the Premier League you, you you're bound to have a little bit of a dip in intensity um, and and trying to rediscover that that. That acceleration is, is, you know, is easier said than done. But on, you know, on, on the same token, Arsenal, I thought was absolutely superb on the day. And I, I remember sort of the first 20, 30 minutes, they could have been out of sight. They, they, they created, they created so yeah, many yeah. chances. Yeah. And I thought they were excellent. And, and it, it, it begs the question, doesn't it? Why can't Arsenal, why can't Arsenal perform like that week in, week out? Why can't they find that consistency? Because if they could find that consistency, if they could, Produce and churn out those performances on a, on a weekly basis. Then you know they would, without shadow of a doubt, be be challenging from the for the Premier League on you know year in year out. But for some reason they 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 struggle to 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 to, to replicate that sort of performance in, in in the Premier League. And I think that's the that, that, that's going to be the key for us and Arsenal Wenger next season. I think with the Europa League. Uh, with all due respect to the tournament, and obviously winning it does does offer does offer Champions League football. But I think Europa League will take a back seat next season, and it's the the, the, the vision for Arsenal Wenger should be get the Premier League form back up and running, get it consistent, um, and you know qualify for the Champions League again through the league, the, you know, for, for, for the following season. Yeah, I mean, you you mentioned Arsene Wenger there, and of course he 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 decided to stay on and 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 sign a two year deal. I remember mm. on the the day of the cup final, um, you know, the celebrations. There were some people thinking that was a bit of a farewell, the way he was coming round and waving and and all that. Some people thought it was obviously, you know, the the cup will motivate him to go on. Um, it was obviously the latter. I mean, what's the general mood? I mean, in the media, what was the general mood at the time? Um, I think it was it was pretty much expected, really, wasn't it? But I mean, mm. what 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 was the mood, and 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 how do you think this will kind of play out, maybe this summer and and start of next summer? I mean, you know, just just a sort of back end to that question. I mean, you know, if you were in the first press conference, able to ask him a question, I mean, 
would that question be sort of looking back or would you kind of now start to look forward again? No, well, I think you, don't, you have to, with my journey's out, and you have to look back. You have to ask him the question as to, you know, why he decided to stay because, he, you know, I, I know... I know, you know, he, he, he's kind of had, you know, when you've asked, when you when when we've asked him in the in, in the past about the fan reaction towards him, particularly towards the end of last season, he's kind of looked at, you know, he, he's he, he's had the blinkers on, he's kind of tried to ignore it, but the the sort of the, the, the disharmony across the fan base was, it was, you know, you couldn't avoid it. It was it was yes, it was yes. like a cloud hanging over the club over those final final weeks of this you know final months and weeks of the season. So with you know when 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 we see him at the start of next season, you know the first question will be you know why he decided to stay, whether the fans you know whether the fans um, or that that core group of fans who want him gone, whether you know whether whether he paid them sort of any attention, and when when when. You know, when he came to deciding that he wanted to stay. Um, but moving forward, I think you know it was. I'm not sure. It, I'm not sure the club handled his contract extension in the right way. I thought there were the the, the, the silence was. I, I, I thought the silence sort of throughout the season and not clearing up the situation was a mistake because I thought it it um, it brought sort of it brought. Not, not necessarily disharmony, disharmony to the squad, but I thought they were they were unclear in what direction the, the, the squad were heading. Whether the manager was staying. Now they know. No, now we know that he is staying, and then they can actually move forward in one direction, get the signing in, signing thing that they need to get, and and, and move forward. But the the, the problem we're going to have is that there's going to always have this this this, this group these group of supporters that essentially want Arsenal Wenger to go. So. If you've got a situation like at the start of last season, I think it was last season when they lost to well, lost to Liverpool at home. Yeah. And and obviously the the, the the fans were you know there was there was there was bad reaction from supporters then. So you, that, that that's the kind of situation that the club need to avoid is having a bad start to the season and having those those um, those negative voices from supporters sort of rearing their head again. That's the, that's the last thing that the club want going into the new season. Yeah, I mean, just I'm just just thinking about. I mean, there is something with Arsene Wenger, isn't it, that he seems to, you know, either win an FA Cup when the chips are really down, or 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 mm. just just something when the back's against the wall. He seems to just do something which kind of mm. just keeps him there. And I, you know, I I think of sort of all the away games that that I've been to this season, which is the majority. And there's two particular grounds I can think of where where at the end of the game, Arsene Wenger has to kind of walk pretty much past the away end, which, you know, Arsene Wenger's very much he, he, a quick handshake and he's straight down the tunnel usually. Mm. But there's, there, was, there was Burnley and there was Stoke where he had to actually acknowledge the Arsenal fans because we were right there. And obviously Burnley was his um, was was the Wenger 20, was his 20th year anniversary at the time. We won the game with a last-minute goal, so it was, it was generally quite positive. He got a great ovation. And then the other one was Stoke where we had, I think we had won 4-0 and we had won there for the first time in absolutely years so there again it was kind of a it was quite an easy one for him because we you know everyone was quite happy it just it just seems like he does i don't know there's something about him that he just does get this element of luck every time Mm -hmm. when you think things are just gonna go you know you have a thing of crystal palace was the worst one but the away dugout is right on the other end and and the tunnel's there as well so you don't really you know he was straight down the tunnel really so I don't know. It's just one of those weird things yeah. that, that I I I, I was at that Palace game. I was at yeah. that Palace game, and I, I remember thinking at the time, I don't, I I couldn't see any way, any way back from him from yeah, there. Yeah, no, a lot the of us thought that. Was just so poor, and I think obviously the fan reaction that night was um was so, was so clear for everyone to see that you know a, a, a large section, should we say, of of, 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 the, of the of the supporters that were there last night that that night. Um, were wanted you know wanted wanted him to go wanted him to leave and um, I think a lot of those supporters I don't know Echo I don't know you tell me you know was it was it was there did you feel there was an element of of, of supporters who, who wanted them who wanted the club to to have to have a disappointing end to the season 
in order for Wenger to go. I don't, I, I don't know if, if the if, if the bad feeling, if the ill feeling towards yeah. Wenger is that is that strong that. <laughs> yeah, you actually want your team to lose it's, 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 a, it's a tough one isn't it because you I mean the only places where I really heard or saw that was social media or potentially mm. a, a radio phone in I, I never once saw that in an away end or even the home mm. end so it, I don't know it, is it sort of that just sort of knee jerk reaction after a game where where people say that or or after a press conference or after you know whatever is it just a quick reaction I I don't know I I certainly didn't see any evidence of that uh, you know at games I think at games I think think that's important I think that's the important thing to to, 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 that's that's the gauge isn't it social media's got its place in you know in in modern day football it's you know social media is is massive in, in, in today's society but I think you know, but fundamentally, your supporter, your your core support group is are the guys that go week in, week out, that travel up and down the country, that have, have got season tickets that go, and for all you know, for largely, uh, and, and, and obviously you know better than I do, that because you go, you watch them most weeks. But I, I, I don't think at games there was that there was that dissenting sort of that that massive dissenting voice. I think you had one or two, didn't you? That that yeah. were that were anti Wenger, but on on the whole, I think they, they they have massive respect for the manager. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, there was probably there's probably more people that that thought it was time for a change than there mm. wasn't, but it was still at games. It was generally quite respectful. There were a few games, as as we said about Palace and West Brom and and things like that, where it did get a little bit. But then again, it, it is it's 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 a it's an emotive game. It, it's a game full of passion. Mm. When your team's just lost, your you know it, it does feel like the end of the world. So uh, you know, I yeah. guess we have to see. I mean, like you, it, it's I think it's all about starting the season well for Arsenal and then for us and Wenger and then just kind of seeing what happens um, and and talking about sort of starting the season well of course you know you you what with what you know to sort of think about last season you know the first game we, we had a lot of players who weren't back from international duty hopefully that won't be as big of, of a issue even though there are players like the you know Mustafi and, and Sanchez if he stays that are away at the moment so you think they'll come back a little bit later but but generally how do you think Arsenal's summer is shaping up obviously we've we've signed the left back pretty early um how do you see the rest panning so i guess the, 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 there's two questions there there's the ins and the outs there's the the alexis and the the Ozil thing and then also sort of coming in the you know the stories about lacazette which i know you've you've written about this week um you know mbappe rumor is still kind of there and their amounts um you know the other chap from monaco as well i mean what what, what do you think How's the summer shaping up from a transfer point? If I put my, if I put money on it, I think the two signings, the two major signings that they will do is Lacazette, and I think they'll do uh, Thomas Lamar from Monaco. Oh, yeah. um, I think they'll be the two main pieces of business, and I think that'll be that that'll be quite a good business. Lacazette in particular would be an exciting signing. Arsenal have been crying out for a, for a, a centre forward now for for a, for, for a number of years. Um, a number of seasons, and I think if they can go and get Lacazette, um, then uh, that, that 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 would that would that would sort of fill a fill a massive hole in 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 in, in the squad. Uh, in Bappe, yeah, I think the genuine, I think the the interest is certainly genuine. Uh, the problem you've got with Mbappe is that he's probably the the, the most sought after yeah. young player in in the world right now. So uh, Arsenal. Despite obviously, despite having Arsene Wenger there, and you know Arsene Wenger standing as, you know, as, as uh, you know, you know, having the French links there, uh, I, I still think that Real Madrid will be, are, are the favourites for to sign Mbappe if he is to leave Monaco this summer. Um, certainly, without without Champions League football next season, um, I don't really see. Um, I don't see the the the, the law for Mbappe to to to, to join Arsenal. Oh. Uh, he's at a club at Monaco, going places at the moment in the Champions League. Um, so I don't see why he would he would take a step down out of out of that competition. Now, um, obviously, Arsenal, Arsenal, Wenger, and Arsenal have offered him the opportunity to go, opportunity to play uh, as a as a number nine. Mm. 
as, as a centre forward every week. So that could be, you know, that could be a, a deciding factor in when he makes his decision. But I'd I'd imagine um, taking an educated sort of knowledgeable guess that. Uh, Mbappe will not be joining Arsenal this summer, and if he does leave, he'll, he'll go to Real Madrid. Yeah. Uh, if I was him, I would stay at Monaco for sure for another year or, or two. Yeah. I think if looking at it, you know, Monaco, are, as you say, they're, they're in Europe, they're in the Champions League, they're, 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 they're you know, they're, they're. But did they win the league at the end? They, they, they won the. I think they did. Yeah, yeah they did. So, they, they won the league. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, it's, it's. I would certainly stay yeah, there. I, I don't. I, I can't see the. I can't see the attraction. Uh, for Mbappe yeah. to, to come to come to Arsenal, and I think that's the biggest. I think that's the, I think that's going to be one of the major problems for for Arsenal this summer is is attracting that elite level of player without having a Champions League place. And now, that, and, and the problem is as well, if you look at it from a player's point of view, is uh, and I know this is the problem. I know this is the problem that they've had in trying to in trying to uh, attract players this summer is that now they're out of the Champions League and they didn't finish in the top four. There's no guarantees given given the the competitive nature of, of the Premier League. There's no guarantees that they're going to get back into it um, next season either. Yeah. So, attra- you know, attracting a attracting a player um, attracting a player of elite status is um, with, uh, you know without having without having that that carrot of Champions League football is very very yeah. difficult. I mean that's ironically that's something Arsene Wenger has been saying for years as well, hasn't it? I mean, you've you've been at these same AGMs I've been at when he said mm. he's put Champions League football uh, uh, ahead of you know winning domestic cups. And yeah. I remember one season in particular, he said a top player in Europe doesn't ask you if you've won the FA Cup. He asks you, are you in the Champions League? And I mean, ironically, look what happened this summer. But I mean, you, you talk about sort of attracting players, those top top players. What about mm. keeping those top top players? And I think you know know who I mean. There. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be hugely difficult. It's going to be hugely difficult. I think all the noises coming out of I think all the noises coming out of South America, noises coming out from those close to to, to Alexis Sanchez is that he wants off. Um, um, I don't, I don't, I can't see how. Arsenal can persuade him to sign to sign another contract. If I'm honest, um, which which will essentially mean that you know they'll have to sell him. But I don't, I can't see, I can't see Arsenal risking risking losing him for nothing at the end of next season. Yeah. Um, so the, Sanchez is obviously Sanchez is is is, is the one that the, the, the club desperately want to keep. He's without doubt the club's best player. Yeah. Um, you know, we saw that several times last last season. He's a winner. We saw, I think it was it was it the Bournemouth game, Akil, where I think you came back from you were three 0 down, and yeah, he came away, and he yeah. came. And the players were celebrating, weren't they? At the end, yeah. some of the players were celebrating at the end of the game. But he was he was he was disappointed and he was furious. Not that you know they that they that they didn't win the game. And I think the club needs certainly needs those sort of those, more of those characters. And to lose Sanchez this summer, if that is if that is to be the case, it's going to be a massive blow. You know, it's going to be it's going to be massively difficult for them to keep him. With with o, with Ozil, I think they, they stand a better chance of, of of keeping Ozil. I don't think um, Ozil has the takers. I'm not sure there's there's a massive market for yeah. for, for Ozil across Europe. But I know he's, he's got a, he, he, you know he could go to China in a heartbeat. I think I, I know yeah, they would yeah, take yeah. they're taking. But so maybe I, I want to go to particularly in a World Cup year. Does he want to go and play in China? I don't think he does. So um, I think the club has a better chance of keeping Ozil and and, and getting him to sign a new contract. Yeah. Uh, and the other one is obviously Alex Oxlade Chamberlain, yeah, yeah. Who, who's who's out of contract at the end of next season as well. Um, he, um, give, you know, he, he's another one who's who's <laughs> he's been offered and he's been, you know, he, they've had contract talks, but at the moment they can't find an agreement. Um, he's one that they're going to try, going to have to try and try and try and keep because you know, he, one, he's English, so he helps with the with the homegrown quota, yeah. and two, I think he's just going to be coming into his prime now, so. Yeah. 
the last thing that Arsenal want is to is to sell is to mm. sell um, Alex Oxlade Chamberlain and see him flourish at a Premier League rival or, or, or elsewhere. I mean, the noises we we had pretty much for the last four months has been. Arsenal sort of need to know what their wage bill will be if Alexis and Ozil sign up and without knowing what's going to happen there it's very difficult to to know how much how high you can go for a Chamberlain or a Wilshire or a Chesney if, if they're to re-sign um, or, or to renegotiate with Ramsey I think he's got two years left and those are kind of the noises we were hearing um, sort of three four months ago and, and you know with the Ox actually I, I, I was lucky enough to go to the Arsenal charity found ball this um well in, in mm. sort of mid May and um we had a few players on our table and Alex Oxford Chamberlain actually spent half an hour sitting next to me. Um and you know he's a really likable lad. He's mm. he's a real he's I think he's quite determined as well and he's very uh he, he's quite direct. I mean I I sort of asked him, you know, what is your best position and, and without thinking you know he said central midfield straight away and I think I mean I, I watched the FA Cup final again several times uh, despite being there and, and you know he, he said it on BT Sports he wants to be a Steven Gerrard and, and you know he, he's obviously not played there that much recently he's been playing out wide and, and, and I mean uh, the feeling I got after talking to him was, you know what, I think he could be off, you know. It was just mm. something about, he just seemed a bit too determined to to, to want to do certain things. Um, but then talking to people after, you know, people within the club on the night, a lot of them were like, nah, nah, he, he'll stay. I think he, he knows he kind of belongs here and things like that. But, yeah, it's 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 interesting with him. Um, yeah, I think know. there's a lot of uncertainty with, I think there's a lot of uncertainty with, Certainly, Voxo Chamberlain is my understanding that is, is that a deal for him is is certainly not a given. Um, and again, like Ozil and Sanchez, if he doesn't sign a contract, then I think the only option for for the club would be to sort of listen to offers for him because they can't mm. afford to, to to lose a player of that of that calibre, uh, you know, and who would command a, a fee of at least I'd I'd imagine. Twenty-five million pounds. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They, they could not afford to, to lose a player of that that valuation for nothing next mm-hmm. season. So um, it's certainly crunch time for for, for for three of those for for, for, for those three players. And um, that for me, I think, obviously, getting new players in through the door is is a massive priority for the club. But keeping keeping certainly Alexis and uh, Alex Rocco Chamberlain. Um, are uh, if not you know probably a bigger priority for the club at the moment. I think it would really hurt us to see Oxford Chamberlain go to Liverpool and Sanchez go to City, but yeah, let's let's hope that doesn't happen from an Arsenal point of view anyway. Um, yeah. I mean, sadly, we're going to leave it on that on that slightly depressing note. Oh, right. um, but but you know, let, let's hope people players do have U turns, things do change. So let's let's see what happens. There's a long summer ahead. Yeah, no, totally, mate. And I, and I think, and I think, yeah, if they can keep those players, then they um, they've got a chance of, of getting back into the top four next season. But um, if you, certainly, if you lose, if, if they lose Alexis Sanchez, then rebuilding re, is just such a massive part of that yeah, team. Yeah. So re, rebuilding next season, you mm. know. I mean, just. Okay. just... Just quickly, the last question I suppose on Sanchez yeah. would be: I mean, Arsene Wenger, yeah, you know, and, and he said this several times about other players, but he, he he's often said he's willing to to run down their contracts, um, mm-hmm. uh, you know. Yeah, and, and I think with Van Persie, with Fabregas, Nasri, it was a completely different you know ball game at the time. There was financially, we were in a much in a very different place. That the TV mm-hmm. revenue was very different at the time, so I think that was a little bit of an empty kind of threat. Where Whereas now, financially, anyway, you could actually justify it. And if if Sanchez stayed and got us back into Europe, and you know, we even went close for the league, do you actually think Arsenal would look at that and think, actually, you know what, it might be worth taking the hit, um, even mm, if he doesn't it's not sign? The realms. It's certainly not beyond the realms because um, you're right. You know, if, if they if, if they did hang on to him, and and Got his, and you know Sanchez played a massive you know played a massive role in getting them back into the into the Champions League next season. Then then certainly I think the gamble I think the gamble will be worth it. Um, but the problem you've got is if he does stay and they don't make the top four, then you've taken 
probably a £40 million pound hit yeah, on yeah. a player. Yeah, it's a risk. And it's a massive risk. Mm. Uh, so I, I, I don't think I don't think the club would, would be prepared to do that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think deep down I agree with you. I'm just trying to keep a little bit of hope yeah, to see no. Alexi Sanchez in an Arsenal shirt again. Thinking, yeah. Anyway, Sammy, I'm going to let you go. Enjoy the rest of your summer. Um, have you been on holiday yet or anything? No, no, I'll be going. I'm going to go away. Um, I'm going to go away at the end of the week, which means oh, nice. unfortunately I'll be I'll be missing the uh, tour to Australia. Yeah. And uh, and China, which I would have loved to have gone on, but uh, no, I'm gonna have a um, I'm gonna have a, a few weeks off, mate. Yeah. So uh, I'll look just, forward to that. You enjoy enjoy your few weeks off and get ready for the season. Will do. Cheers, Akil. Cheers, Sammy. Welcome back to the podcast. I now have Jeremy Wilson from The Telegraph. Hi, Jeremy. Hi, Akil. How's the summer been? Enjoying it? It's been, <laughs> yeah, it's been okay. It doesn't feel like too long until the uh, sort of football starts. A lot of clubs, a lot of people back for pre-season. I don't know whether, I'm not, I think Arsenal might be next week, most of the, the ones that are not on in, you know, yeah, in the Confederations it's, Cup it's and like, things, but some clubs it's um, back end of this week so wow. yeah it's wow. a small window when you sort of go up to the end of the internationals and everything but yeah. I'm doing a little bit of tennis next week as well so oh, cool. it makes quite a nice change yeah. but yeah it won't be long till uh, the season's upon us yeah absolutely so I, I just want to I, I want to go back to uh, was it May the 26th or 27th whenever it was uh, the FA Cup final um, you know, we, we, we obviously, we ended the season well. Um, we, we won the semi final, but, but I don't think, I think hand on heart, I don't think anyone would say, you know, we had a game where we absolutely battered a top club or, or, or we played, you know, really, really well until, of course, the FA Cup final, where I think we can all agree Arsenal were just fantastic. I mean, <laughs> firstly, where did that come from? And I guess, secondly, was was kind of you know were the media was was were people quite shocked at that performance or was it a little bit Chelsea was slightly on the beach and and you know the double was not not worth you know as much as the double used to be worth certainly when Arsenal were winning it what what do you think why do you think Arsenal performed so well and why do you think Chelsea perhaps didn't it was it was a surprise I don't think Chelsea were on the bit, I think they wanted to, to win. I think there's a lot of people sort of, yeah. it's easy to kind of downplay the FA Cup. I thought it was a sort of spectacular end of the season for Arsenal. I mean, I think, I think that the season is so framed by that period between the end of January and yeah. sort of early April where everything fell apart. But actually to, to do what, Arsenal did from the end of, from the beginning of sort of the the, the Sunderland game, oh the Middlesbrough game, sorry, um, in April to, to yeah, the end yeah. of the season, and I think it was an incredible, incredible achievement. Actually, it really extraordinary. I, you know, I just did not think that that was feasible at that period. I thought the team were, were gone basically, a bit like the the season where you lost to Birmingham in the League Cup final yeah, and it just sort of trailed off and I just I couldn't see that last month six weeks of the season and it kind of it, it steadily built up really it was you know the, the, although the the results turned where, when the team switched to the, the three at the back it, the performances took a bit longer to turn um, and but but they did to be fair I mean the I suppose you could see the signs of it partly in the just sort of the kind of resilience against Man City in the final, and then, but then I thought the team did play very well in a few of the games at the end of the season, especially the Everton one with ten men, even though it yeah, kind of yeah. in yeah. the end counted for counted for nothing. But Stoke as well. it, did, it, did, it did sort of prompt a bit of a question of what where 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 were people like Ozil and Sanchez um, in the middle, you know, in that in that other period. And but then I, I think for other players. I think that the system did did make a big difference, not just the defence, but particularly in central midfield, Ramsey and Saka. They they, they really benefited from that system, and also the the fullbacks or the wing backs as well. If you seem more suited to it, so it was it was a surprise. But I think after everything that had happened, I thought it was 
sort of quite extraordinary, really, especially the especially given the, the sort of, especially the side story, partly of, of Wenger, but but even more so, really, of Mertesacker coming in for that yeah. game. At, you um, know, I thought it was, I really thought it was an amazing FA Cup final, really, um, as a as a neutral, and I wouldn't sort of, you know, I'd understand the frustrations of the season, but I think there was a lot there that Arsenal, if you're an Arsenal fan, you should be fairly sort of ecstatic about it that 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 day. I mean you can't you know, you can't buy days like that very often there where you where you sort of perform against the odds, you know, with with a with all the sort of problems that there were in defence against the backdrop of the season, against the team that have been the best in the league. I mean it was just uh, just even for a neutral, you could sense, especially with the sort of whole narrative of sort of Benger in the season and how how low everybody got. I thought it was an, uh, a sort of amazing, amazing bit of sport, really. Um, that, that 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 FA yeah. Cup final. So, yes, I, I understand that. You know, there are wider issues to be addressed in the season, and sort of why why do Arsenal always have a period in the season where where they dip dip sufficiently to kind of destroy their chances of winning the league but um yeah I, I, I don't think i don't think i don't buy this thing of clubs don't care about the fa cup i mean you look at those those two semi-finals really intense semi-finals Tottenham against chelsea yeah. and then arsenal against man city okay so, so okay some of the early rounds teams teams obviously fiddle around with their Team, their selection a lot more than they used to, but when you get to the the sort of back end of it, I think everybody's really really going for it. They're they're, they're big games and big occasions. I mean, I, I think I think every Arsenal fan and, and will will tell you you have to kind of when you go into a cup final like that, I think you have to forget what's happened in the league. You just wanna you wanna enjoy the day. You wanna try and win the game, and then obviously you wanna celebrate all night, which is kind of what we did. So. It, it, it certainly was, you know, it, it was a great day for us, I think. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you mentioned him, the side story. I mean, yeah, I mean, you, you bang on about Per Mertesacker. I mean, poof, what a performance. I think he, he, he's definitely earned that one year deal in, in many, many people's eyes at Arsenal. But the other it was side. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. No, please, please go on. Yeah. No, I just, uh, I mean, I can't. You know, for an FA Cup final story, I suppose Ramsey winning, uh, scoring the winner yeah, for the second time in four seasons is, is you know, in the back in the day, the you know the the FA Cup, you know, if 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 you scored the winner in the FA Cup final, that was sort of you were a folk hero for life, and Ramsey sort of done it twice. But I was going to say even he he was overshadowed really that story of Murtasaka as a sort of comeback and. Uh, you know, up against um, Costa and Hazard, and having not 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 played for a year was uh, it was amazing. A real, a real sort of yeah. testament to Mertesacker as well. I sort of add add in add in also that I think Wenger made quite a big mistake by not using him in that period um, between between fit because he was fit come yeah, Feb- yeah, around yeah. February time and. I know I sound like I'm, uh, you know, it's easy in hindsight, but I'm pretty sure I, I'm certain I wrote at some point. <laughs> I remember when, when, Gab, you know, when uh, Koscielny went off in the Bayern Munich game, yeah. I was thinking uh, I would much rather Mertesacker coming yeah, on if yeah, I was an Arsenal yeah. fan, even though, even for all his limitations, I just don't think those sort of, the way that you collapsed in some of those games, mm-hmm. I know that he can be caught for pace and all the rest of it, but I just think his sort of, Character and spirit would have would have could have could have could have been the difference to getting certainly getting in the top four and at least minimising the damage in that period. But yeah, it's easy. It's easy. Yeah. I suppose it's easy in hindsight to uh, to say that. And I think I think he was on the bench, wasn't he, in the fourth round of the FA Cup actually against Southampton. Yeah. When he came to Southampton. Yeah, um, but we didn't didn't see yeah. much. But. Yeah, it's just one of those one of those strange strange things. But I mean, it certainly. Well, I mean, Martin Keown called it the Murta Saka final, um, and I don't think he's far wrong there. I mean, it's yeah, 
He certainly, certainly, I think, I think just, he reminded Arsenal fans of, 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 you know, like you say, all his limitations, but then on the other hand, you've got his professionalism, his, he, he, you know, the fact that he's a leader. I mean, the other day we had Callum Chambers come out and say how Per was kind of a bit of a role model for him a season before last. And, and, you know, there's been other players that have come out and said how, how Mertesacker Saka is just a total leader. And I, I, I see why Arsenal do want to keep him around. And I think, you know, even after his playing career finishes, it'll be great to keep him around because he's obviously the sort of person you want. Yeah, I think he's one. I mean, Arsenal did have at times, I don't think it's any great... They've lacked... I think it's yeah. sort of a bit of a cliche to say they've lacked leaders. They've lacked those sort of impressive characters. And without being too rude about some of the captains before, you kind of <laughs> knew with a sort of... Galas was a sort of... There's a lot. There's a lot to like about him, but you knew he had. You knew he had that crack in his armoury. Yeah. And Fabregas, I have to say, was never too sold on him. To be honest, he, I always felt he was. I mean, certainly with the media, he was. He always came across as quite a, a little bit sort of moody and standoffish. Maybe it was just a, a lot of the time was a period of of um, when when he was obviously wanting to go to Barcelona, but. I don't know. As a captain, you sort of thought if that's your if that's your sort of front man, yeah, you sort of quite moody. Looks like he wants to leave. I mean, that's not. I don't think that's a great, a great, a great sort of. Yeah. You, you know, we all, you always have players like that in a squad, but you, you don't really want them to be your captain if that's yeah, the way they feel. Away from the media. Um, <laughs> and I, I just, but I mean, for Marlon was a, obviously got sort of problems with injuries and Arteta were very impressive but I do think Mertesacker of the Arsenal captains he, yeah. the, the, and, and I'm sort of talking post Vieira obviously yeah, yeah. He, he's the one where you would say you'd, you'd want him to you know he has, he has a great sort of um, backstory of you know he, he, he never expected to be a professional footballer and he, he worked in a mental hospital and he and he um or a hospital where people have been sectioned, I think it was. And, you know, he has a real, he has a different sort of way about him than, than most footballers. And he's sort of very grateful for his career and very down to earth. Yeah. Um, and just a real, real sort of determined to make the most of, 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 of everything that's, that's sort of come his way, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, just sort of moving on now, moving on to this summer. Um, we've obviously signed a left back. We're obviously, um, uh, you know, that there's, there's rumours around Lacazette, um, Mbappe, Lamar at Monaco. And then there's obviously the, the question we've all been asking around sort of Meza Urzil, Alexis Sanchez. And now Alex Oxley Chamberlain has crept into that conversation too. I mean, you've written a little bit about it. What, what, what are your thoughts around sort of the ins and outs at Arsenal and, and how do you see that sort of panning out? It's a big, you know. I, I don't, I can't really remember a summer. There's obviously the summers where you had the obvious issue over certain players. The, the so we mentioned Fabregas and Nasri, and the, yeah. then the following year, I think it was with well, Van Persie. You had sort of, you had summers where there was two or three where there was a bit of a question mark. But I don't think I can ever remember a summer where there's so many players where you think, I wonder what's gonna. Yeah. What's going to happen? So there's a lot of potential upheaval in in and outs. I mean, and quite hard to predict. And and obviously, it's all interlinked because every you know every decision impacts on another yeah, decision. Yeah, and it's yeah. it's it's the, the end result is is to have a cohesive squad. So it's hard it's hard to be too sure exactly what will happen because out outs and in sort of depend on each other to some extent. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, at a, a distance, I think Sanchez is likely to leave. I think Ozil is not still not signing a contract, but there's less options. So maybe he he will stay, or maybe even go into the final year of his contract if he's still not happy with the the the, the contract that's that's on the table. Oxley Chamberlain situation. And I, I mean, there were murmurs throughout the second half of the season, and uh, I, you know, I don't think it was a great secret that he was um, not sure about his future, but it seems to have really blown up in the last week or two. And you don't know whether, you know, maybe it's just a, a standoff and part of the negotiation and a bit of posturing on both sides. But there were talks at the end of the season that supposedly went quite well. Then since then, 
Oxlade Chamberlain's been on holiday and the offer that he's had, I don't think they feel like it's a, a realistic offer to, to where, you know, they, they don't feel like it's a, a sort of an offer that suggests Arsenal are that serious about keeping him. Now, whether it's a sort of opening gambit and there's, that will just play out um, remains to be seen. But at the moment, if there's a standoff and um, the sense you get from both sides is that he could well leave. Um, yeah. It's an, it's an, I think it's an interesting one. It obviously depends who comes in um, because I don't. You can't. I'd, I, I understand the, the sort of argument from Oxley Chamberlain's point of view that he's performed well at the end of the season. Equally, if you take his time, and, he, and he's young, and the best years still ahead of him. You know, he's he's three or four years younger than the sort of Walcotts, and he's a bit younger than yeah, Ramsey, yeah. I think. To is, double yeah. check, but he he's he's on the lower. You know, he's twenty three, more twenty three, twenty four than. Yeah. Yeah. 26, 27. So, but I, I also think from Arsenal's point of view, you don't really want to be held, feel like you're being sort of pushed around mm. by um, by Oxlade Chamberlain without being sort of, I don't mean that in a disrespectful yeah, no, way really. to him because he's obviously has potential, but you know, he's not, he's not done that much. As he, you, don't, you don't look at it and think, well, he, he should, you know, give him what he wants sort of thing. He, he, I can see why Arsenal sort of feel like they're, they're not going to treat him like he's Alexis Sanchez. And I'm not saying he wants to be treated like Alexis Sanchez, but equally, I think if you look at his statistics, it's only really been this year where he's, he's begun to look like a, a sort of first team, like he could be a first team regular so I can, you know, I can see why they're, you know, they're not sort of completely um, desperate, you know, bending over to give him a, a, a salary that would that would put him right up with the very highest earners at Arsenal. Um, but I wonder whether, you know, Liverpool are certainly interested, um, but I, I still wonder whether that's got a bit to play out and whether it is just a little bit of posturing at the moment. And, yeah. you know, we, we've had this with... Um, sort of Theo Walcott negotiations yeah, yeah. before and uh, and, uh, and other players and um, when it comes down to it is is he going to get a better you know is is moving to Liverpool that much better for him I don't I don't know it's a sort of yeah. fairly uh, you know without without being involved in the sort of who's best out of Arsenal Liverpool most I think looking at it from a distance most people would say it's a fairly it's not it's not a sort of particular it's a fairly level move yeah, really yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. so. And then you look at um, a sort of Chelsea or Man City. I don't think he would. Yeah. I think he, I can't see that he get that much game time, and I'm not sure how sure they would be yeah. about about him. So I'm not. When it comes down to it, I, I kind of think they're both probably better off. You know, I think Arsenal Just with, with his improvement other, and his yeah. versatility are better. Yeah, yeah. I, I wonder if they'll sort it out. But uh, as I say, at the moment, at the moment, the, 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 there is this standoff and. Both uh, both seem to be looking at it as if as if as if he might leave, so yeah. um, or, or as if he will leave at I the was, moment. I think so. I was, um, I was I was at I was at the Arsenal Foundation ball this summer. Uh, well, in May, I was talking to Sammy about this actually in, the, in part one of the pod. But it, it, he, I was lucky enough to sit next to him for about twenty twenty five minutes, um, and and I completely hogged hogged <laughs> hogged him and asked him loads of questions <laughs> about football and stuff like that. And he, you know, I mean, one thing is he's a very interesting guy and he's a very intelligent guy, and and you know there was things that yeah. you know he was telling me like he's worked on his game where. You you know, in previous years, he, he used to say that I always used to think I need to get to the bar line and put a ball in, whereas now I've realised that, you know what, I don't need to always beat a man, just just, just a yard of space, half a yard of space, and, and I can get that ball in. And, you know, I think he was talking about, like, the Monreal goal or or, or, or Giroud's header at Old Trafford when he put Marcus Rashford on his ass. Um But, I mean, I, 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 for me, I thought the FA Cup was quite a big thing. And, I mean, this was sort of, this was a few days before the Everton game. And, and and he he told us he was fit for the cup final. He he told us he wasn't going to be in the squad for the Everton game. But you you got the sense that he really wanted to play in that cup final. And 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 for me, I I went away thinking, okay, you know what? If he doesn't play in that cup final, then I do fear for for the future, like his future here, because I think 
that could just slightly push him over the edge. And and obviously, in the end, there was no real yeah. decision to be made because of the injuries and stuff he played anyway. But I think it would have been very interesting if we hadn't had lost, or if Koscielny or, or if Mustafi was fit or, or Gibbs was fit, what would have happened there. But, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of agree with you there. That I just think that there isn't much difference between Arsenal and Liverpool. You know, yeah, Liverpool are in the Champions League, but... Obviously, that can change again in the following season and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I, I do hope he stays. But, I mean, with a question to that, is, I mean, this was something touted about three or four months ago, but are Arsenal sort of hanging around to know if Alexis and Meza Urza are going to stay? And if they are, how much they're actually going to have to pay them? Because obviously, there is a, there is a slight cap in, in how much you can increase your wages and things like that, uh, unless you can prove extra income, which, which in Arsenal's case it'll be quite flat this year and not being in the Champions League means it's quite flat do you think there's an element of they've had to wait on players like Chamberlain and even like Wilshire and, and, and players like that because they're waiting for the big two and then that leads me on to the question about the big two Alexis and, and, and Sanchez um, Alexis and Ozil sorry I mean you, you've kind of mentioned that your gut instinct is Sanchez will go and I think it I think most Arsenal fans now think that as well but at the same time it seems like there's only one club really now in for him and that's that's Manchester City so how do you see that going so I, I realise I've asked you about six questions in one there <laughs> well the, the wages thing I think is interesting I mean Arsenal would certainly say that they're you know they're, they're obviously across all of this and it is it's not it's not an issue of not having money it's just an issue that they have to balance it but it, this rule yeah. basically the rule is that you can't in, the maximum you can increase your wage bill um, if, if you're already over a certain level and if you're already increased it by a certain amount um, since 2012 is 7 million so, per per year um, and that is a lot more of a, uh, but but that's seven million of TV money, if that if that makes sense. So yeah. if you've got other income, you can increase it by more. Now that's more of a problem to Arsenal than the other um, top clubs for different reasons. For Ma- in Manchester United's case, it's because their commercial revenues um, have have sort of increased so much that they're able to sort of supplement that. 7 million with with commercial money and in Chelsea and Manchester City's case it's because their wage bill has actually been quite static since 2012 even I think Manchester City's has dropped a little bit because basically they had their huge splurges before 2012 whereas Arsenal have actually the, the, their spending relatively has come has been accelerated in the last few years so um, I know it's a bit of a complicated Question, sort of uh, thing to explain, yeah, no, but no, basically okay. Arsenal have to be have to be a bit more careful than the other their main rivals about increasing their wage bill this this summer. Um, I don't think it will be a huge problem because of the outs, but it is a factor because if Sanchez and Ozil were to stay, they would obviously take care of an increase that would probably more than yeah. cover that that amount. So that would mean they'd have to move players, particularly if they wanted to add another. Um, sort of top top signing, but the 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 thing that helps them in that regard is there is quite a lot of you know there is six or seven players you could sort of almost instantly name that you would think that they will get off the wage bill this summer if they if they can find sort of homes for them. So I think it is is a bit of a question, and also I suppose as, as you said the the most likely outcome is is not is that both of them won't stay, that at least one of them will go. So. Sanchez is Sanchez is an interesting one because um obviously Arsenal would rather he went abroad and Bayern Munich have, and PSG was making some running earlier in the year but Bayern seemed the most likely club from abroad but I think it would be difficult especially if Ozil hasn't signed and they have got a firm offer for Sanchez and even if it's from Manchester City I think it'd be hard to risk losing both of them for nothing next year um, so. As much as Arsenal might not want him to go to a rival, I think if they got if they got to the end of or got to August um, and they hadn't had and uh, he hadn't signed his contract, sorry, and he was he was set on an English club, um, a bit like with Van Persie, then I'm not I'm not sh- sure that Arsenal will be able to do a, a huge amount about it if if the offer is. Is, is 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 big enough basically obviously they'll say no if it's a sort of fairly 
sort of light offer for for what they think Sanchez is yeah. worth. Yeah. Um, they'd rather take the hit if it's not a big bit, but you'd presume that the City or Chelsea would, would come in with a high enough um, bid. So I think I do sort of think that probably Sanchez holds most of the cards as, as Van Persie did a few years ago. Yeah. I mean, do, do you think genuinely Arsenal would let one of them at least run their contract down with the risk of them going on a free? I mean, obviously, it's slightly different to the Van Persie Fabregas time or Nasri rather time because, you know, financially things have changed, TV revenues and all that sort of stuff. But I mean, would Arsenal actually let either of them run their contract down? I mean, it was a question I asked Sammy that I don't think they would if they had a decent offer. But if, say, no one's come in, say, say, I think Sanchez, they will get offers sort of 30 or 40, maybe even more if there's more than one club involved. But I think with, um, I think with Ozil, if you're only offered, say, the most that anyone comes in is sort of 15, 20, 25 million, I don't know. Then, then maybe the counter argument is actually it's better to, 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 it is, yeah, exactly. And, and equally, there's equally there's not you know it, it works both ways. And if Ozil thinks that he can ha- open up his options next season, or even Sanchez with a sort of signing on fee, and they'd rather sit on a sort of lower salary this year, um, it's, you know, there's nothing Arsenal can do about that either. I mean, it yeah. works both ways. That uh, even if Arsenal accepted a bid from somebody, um, the player doesn't have to move. So I don't. I, I think if there was a good offer, they wouldn't let either player run down their contracts. But it's it, it would depend on the size of the offer. I think yeah, that's absolutely. you sort of judge you judge whether you take the hit according yeah. to how much you're gonna how much you're, you're gonna get. And it's, I, I, I do think that Arsenal shouldn't be frightened of sort of letting one of them go into the into the final year because it's amazing how situations change. You yep. think you think a player there's no chance of them signing and that it's, it's all sort of, you know, you think of Suarez at Liverpool yeah, and yeah. Um, a few months later he was signing a new contract and nearly, I think they nearly won the league won that the year league. after. Yeah, of course. If, and, and Rooney had some, some standoffs at Man United and then when, I think when fortunes turn on the pitch, um, players yeah, suddenly, sure. you know, it's not just about money and uh, if Arsenal, if they stayed and Arsenal had a good season, it's not, it's not impossible that they would view things a bit differently. Um, yeah, yeah. But probably to risk both of them, they, I, I think they'd be pretty worried about that just yeah. because of the, the, the hit they could take. Gushes, yeah. Okay, um, so moving on. In April, um, Ivan Gazidis in, in one of the supporter forums um, talked about a catalyst for change. Um, we, we sort of, we now fast forward and on Thursday we, we all, depending on when you listen to this, but this week, um, we have Ivan Gazidis' Q&A where I'm sure he will be asked about this. I mean, this summer we've seen sort of two appointments and, and, you know, you, you certainly went big on the stories and, and, you know, I, I, I read your pieces. I mean, could you tell us a bit about those two, um, appointments? Um, and, and also what else do you think Arsenal will do off the field this summer to, to kind of, you know, with this sort of catalyst for change kind of thing happening? Yeah, I, I think, it, I think everyone sort of greeted it with a bit of, Skepticism, which is sort of understandable when uh, not skepticism, but there, when Arsene Wenger, I, th- yeah. I think it, there wasn't skepticism when um, the initial uh, the initial sort of promise of change was made. But then, obviously, when Arsene Wenger sort of rubbished the director of football idea and then he stayed, I think that people became a little bit um, skeptical, understandably, especially as yeah, yeah. As, as I understand it. Wenger wanted to stay, had made it clear to the club that he wanted to stay from certainly from the West Brom defeat um, around that time of the season. I can't remember exactly what month that would be, sort of March time. Um, but they felt unable to sort of announce something because they wanted to be able to announce some other appointments with it because I think they felt that announcing Wenger staying at that time almost needed needed kind of hard evidence of we're going to change things a bit behind the scenes to go with it. And at that point they were still interviewing people. And um, so we had this situation where, you know, there, there were no, there was no announcement until the end of the season. So, but I mean, 
I always, I, I must say, I, although Wenger sounded off about the director of football thing and knew what he was doing and um, sort of mocked the idea a little bit, yeah. um, I always, and, that, and, and there was obviously a degree of tension between him and Ivan Gazidis about the sort of nature of um, what, what changes would, would be made. I never felt like it was a, I think you sort of have to, because a lot of people at that point sort of said, well, either Gazidis or Wenger has to go, you know, it's, uh, it's unsustainable. But I think that you sort of, that, that underestimated kind of how sort of logical and sort of gen, mostly day to day, how sort of calm they both are. It wasn't kind of like a Mourinho or a Bramovich yeah, yeah. bat that kind of, there's fireworks and then you kind of know that that's the end of end of it. Well, it's not sort of too, it's not character. There's not that much volatility in the sort of characters there, but yeah, they had, there was a sort of difference of, there was a tension and a working sort of disagreement, but, yeah, yeah, but yeah. they were still, it was sort of funny because Wenger, Wenger sort of sounded off and, it, and, and cause it's sort of quite rare for a sort of, disagreement to be put out in the public domain you sort of think oh it's a lot worse it must be a lot worse than it appears but apparently they were still having lunch together every day at the training ground still talking daily still you know i I don't think it was i don't think for wenger it was sort of that off the scale he he just sometimes speaks his mind about things and actually as much as wenger grumbles and will groan a bit about things he doesn't want to happen he he, he actually goes along with a reasonable amount of change um he he he, he will sort of say it sometimes i remember when there's a whole thing about going touring abroad uh, touring to the yeah, far yeah, east yeah and touring sort of long long haul in the summer and he for years he resisted and then when it finally happened the first press conference he sort of turned up and they, they made it a big emirates event and and uh sort of Tom Fox, who was then the commercial guy, was, was was at the press conference and Wenger first question was sort of how excited are you about going going to wherever it was in it was in China, I think. China, and he yeah. and Wenger sort of basically just said, Well I'd rather not be going. <laughs> and, um, you know, and, 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 and that's just sort of Wenger. and I think it was a bit like that, but but then, you know, he wandered off and and everyone kind of rolled their eyes a bit and kind of said that, you know, oh, well, that's sort of us and he does, he will say how he feels about stuff sometimes. And I think it was, I think it was a bit like that with this, you know. Yeah. I, I, I do remember that because I think then he went, whether it was China or Malaysia, where, where I think the f- first press conference actually out there, and you might have even been there, but the, the local press all stood up for him and gave him an absolute round of applause, which which I think I heard he quite enjoyed. And I think maybe he changed his mind yeah. on his tours because he actually thought, actually, I'm quite like it. It was all well organised. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he quite he did it was all well organized and he quite liked it in the end and i think he you know he will sometimes not tow the sort of line in in public and he will have a bit of a grumble about something but it doesn't necessarily mean that everything's at the sort of level of breaking point because actually if you're if you're the type of manager he's mar- managed for the, the length of time he has at, at different clubs even monaco he was there quite a long time yeah he's not he's not a big fooler out with people of anger he's yeah. not he's not especially volatile around the place and yeah he'll have a bit of a grumble and then he'll still have lunch with gazidis and i think it was a bit like that I, I don't think there was some spectacular fallout. Equally, there was tension, and it will be really interesting to see how this plays out. I think of the two appointments, um, although Huss Farmy from who's Farmy from Team Sky is interesting yeah, because yeah. he's uh, come from a different sport. I think he'll work much more with Gazidis and Dick Law on right. on the sort of legal end of contracts, so probably won't. Uh, he's not going to be involved with the recruiting players. He'll be involved more with their, you know, sorting out their the length of contract, the, the legal complexities, the image rights, and all of that. The sort of, I was sort of, it was put to me that it's more the sort of back end of contracts. He'll he'll be doing the sort of finishing okay. deals. He won't be sort of saying, you know, should we sign this player? Yeah, yeah. So I don't think he will impact on um, Wenger too much. The interesting one, I think, would be Darren Burgess, who's yeah come in in a in an area that is very similar to what Shad Forsyth and Tony Colbert are doing it's a sort of pretty crowded area of expertise now at Arsenal plus you've got Wenger himself who's a, a very bright person in yeah, terms yeah. of sports science and 
training patterns and or you know okay that i'm sure there's people in that world that will that will question whether he's as cutting edge as he was but he equally he has um a lot of knowledge and a lot of opinions in that area so how so how that will all interact i think will be quite interesting because certainly um darren bird is he comes with this sort of very high um reputation from from australian rules and he he was he was pretty full on there from what we can understand his work at Port Adelaide. He was you know, he was he was a, across all the sort of diet, all the all the sort of patterns of, of physical load and medicine. So it would be it would be it would be very interesting how, how that fits in with, with, with Wenger because Wenger certainly has a big yeah, basically controls the, the training patterns and also shed for size. I think that's going to be the, the appointment that, that could, that could, you know, it could, could, could be a stroke of brilliance from good leaders or it could, you know, it could be, uh, it could, could, could cause a, a fair amount of tension, I imagine, given, given how many people you've got sort of who, who appear so, to be yeah. sort of quite heavy hitter sort of characters and, experts working across the sort of same the same areas do you think there'll be any more appointments um sort of behind the scenes like that i think there could be one i mean it's not complete it's still not completely clear because i don't think um i'm not i'm not sure whether i'm pretty sure that jerry payson's future is still not definite right, i okay. don't think i think tony colbert's likely to stay on but yeah. I'm not. I mean, on those two i'm not completely i think there's still a, a, a an, an amount of uh, uncertainty about them um, although I think there's a good chance they'll both stay uh, but I think uh, I, I think sort of to complete the kind of triangle of, of people that um, that have come in you would think there'll be someone who will be more on the sort of talent ID recruitment side of things that that's that's sort of the hole in in what's been recruit what, what's been yeah, appointed yeah, so, yeah. so far a kind of um, well Paul Mitchell did a brilliant job at Southampton and then Tottenham. A, 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 a character like that, who's who's a who's a real expert in the sort of identification and, and assessment of of players. I know Arsenal have got it's that DNA and yeah, have got people yeah. working on that. But that that sort of to me is the, is the is the off field position that's sort of not. Um, that's not that's not sort of that, that I think there still could be some change and certainly the, the 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 understanding we have is that there is likely to be another at least one more appointment but exactly who and what I don't know okay, okay I'm 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 going to sort of wrap this up but just before we do sort of predictions for ins and outs so I'm going to ask you Chamberlain Ozil Sanchez will all of them one of them two of them be an Arsenal player and, you know, from the players we're linked with, the Lacazettes, the, the I mean, Mbappe seems a bit ambitious, the Lamars, who do you see kind of coming in? And, and don't worry, we're not going to hold you to this. And, and if, if the opposite happens, we won't, <laughs> we, won't, we won't come and find you or anything like that. Yeah. Just a prediction. <laughs> no, it's OK. I'll make some get. Yeah, I mean, they are guesses because situations guess, yeah. do, you know, it's June, and it's amazing how situations evolve. Absolutely. So, but anyway... I think Sanchez will probably go, and I think Ozil and Oxley Chamberlain, despite a lot of um, talking and uncertainty, may, may both end up staying. Um, in I think Lacazette looks the most likely, and he yeah. would be a, a straightforward replacement in a way for Sanchez in sort of in terms of type of player he is. Um, but I wonder if Giroud might leave as well, so yeah. that might mean still one more attacking player. Uh, I wonder what I mean Monaco um if Mbappe goes maybe it's harder um for them to sell another one of their players so I mean I, I think there's a deal to be done with Mares as well you know I think he'd be very keen to come so I think Sanchez San, Lacazette for Sanchez and then Giroud sort of 50-50 and then if he goes perhaps Mahrez or something like that yeah. I think that's yeah. I mean that's Arsenal I link with, with um, Thomas Lamar but I think Mahrez seems like he's a backup full-back option which you know as you say yeah you know, is, it, it could, Lamar, it could be quite easy the three priorities uh, yeah the three priorities were were Mbappe Lamar Lacazette in, in any order you know in any order obviously Mbappe yeah, yeah. was the most 
ambitious. But <laughs> in fairness to Wenger, he certainly got himself. He he certainly got himself. He's got Arsenal a hearing in that debate, and and he's not. They've not been written off. But equally, um, I don't think even Wenger or Arsenal think it's 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 likely. Yeah. But but you know he's he's tried, yeah. and you never know with those sort of situations. It's um, you know he tried to get Ozil when he left Schalke. And it turned out he got him two or three years later. And, you know, you never know if, if, if he does leave and go to Real Madrid and it doesn't work out. You know, you never know where, where, yeah. when, when well, time invested in a player could, yeah. could, could pay off. You know, maybe he would just go from strength to strength yeah. and uh, that would be that. But, yeah. you know, you never know. So but they, they were the ones. But I, I, I just think, I, I don't know whether Lamar will go, Lema will go. If Mbappe goes, so I think his, his, he might depend a bit on that. Bit, and yeah. Uh, yeah, if he if if Mbappe stays, then I think Arsenal would have a much obviously a much better chance of getting him. If Mbappe goes to Madrid, then maybe Mares is a is a good option. The, the, the deals that look easiest to do are Lacazette and Mares at yeah, the moment, anyway. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Jack Wilshire, what, what do you think the future holds for him? This is my final question, I promise. Oh, it's, a, it's a really good question. I, I I don't think Arsenal would stand in his way if he if he gets a club that he wants to go to. Um, but I just wonder whether he'll, given especially given what happened at the end of the season with yeah. it, with him getting another injury, I just wonder whether he'll get an offer that is close enough to what he's getting at Arsenal to for him to 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 see it as a as a solution. So. Uh, I've got a feeling he might stay almost by default a little bit because yeah, yeah. maybe the time when a when a sort of club that would pay what Arsenal are paying him or more would 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 take that 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 sort of risk on him. I'm not sure anyone will do it at the moment. So you, know, you, you never know what will happen um, if he stays. He, he, I mean, he might end up going on loan, or he might you know he, he might still. Um, be, sort of become a squad player, but I, I don't know. I mean, it's, he, he looks at the moment quite a long way from, uh, even though he had a reasonable season at Bournemouth, he, he looks quite a long way from a sort of top being a regular in a top four team. Um, sadly, just that the injuries and that sort of mobility, um, the, the, and that sort of ability, that ability to sort of beat a player and burst of pace are just not quite the same as it was. He's obviously still play at a very high level but I just yeah I, I think I think longer term it's probably better for him to go to a club that's that's sort of a slight level down in the in terms of Premier League and play regularly and and, and hope he can get himself physically back to where he was yeah right. certainly I think the Wilshire thing is certainly there's a lot of sentiment and, and things there with Arsenal fans just because of his history and you know how long he's kind of been at the club so yeah I think that's an interesting one it seems like that's that's kind of one to be sorted maybe at the end of the summer rather than sort of sooner so we shall see but Jeremy might depend a bit on pre-season yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Potentially, yeah. If he comes back and, and 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 gets a few, gets a bit of, gets some minutes, yeah, you never know. Jeremy, thank you for your time. Pleasure. Yeah, you're gonna have some time off before the before the fun stuff starts in mid August. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. And I'm sort of, sort of pretty much straight in, and uh, I had I had a little bit at the end of the season, so no, not. Uh, Are you going on the, the tours? Emirates Cup and. Gonna... Uh, um, probably not at the moment. Okay. That's still there's still some decisions to be made. To yeah, be honest. yeah, fair enough. If Mbappe signs, that might help help, <laughs> help uh, us go to Australia. But we cut co- we're covering China. Um, anyway, we've got someone in. He's 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 out in right, China okay, for, okay. for that That's part of, of the uh, tour. So yeah, still still slightly open. Yeah, but pr- probably not. I think. Fair enough. Well, enjoy your time off. Enjoy the the silly season as we know it, and and hopefully we'll, we'll Arsenal will start the season well, and and it will be a successful one. Okay, thanks for having me. Cheers, no problem at all. See ya. This podcast is sponsored by. Football has its ups and downs. You can't win every match, but you can win every bet. Start your free trial and earn thirty pounds risk free today at oddswatchdog.co.uk.